Good morning, Shadydale Church of God. It is now time for our Sunday school lesson. Today's lesson will become is, is uh, January 23rd, 2022, week eight. And our subject will be justice, judges, and priests. What our study is about today is people sometimes distort and manipulate justice. In Deuteronomy, we learn how judges, officials, and priests were to work together to administer justice for God's people. Our Bible passage will be found in Deuteronomy 16 chapter, verses 18 through 20, also the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 13. The topic, topics to be discussed is understanding and applying God's justice. Take a look at our Bible background. It says the fact that God is not interested in mere command keeping can be seen in Deuteronomy 10 and 16. The text will be translated as, can be translated as circumcise the foreskin of your heart. This injunction point points to uh, something more than a physical act of circumcision that would, that each male Israelite underwent. The mind, the will, and the heart were all and are to be brought together. I'm sorry. The mind, the will, and the heart were and are to be brought into relationship with an obedience to God. As today's passage attests, loving God with mind, will, and heart reaches beyond adoration of the Lord Almighty. It extends to loving and justly caring for everyone in particular. This is shown by our commandment, by our commitment to and pursuit of justice for all the people of the world. Okay, so that's our Bible background. Now we'll go ahead and get into the uh, scripture reading. Um, let me share that screen with you once again. Okay, our first reading again will uh, start in uh, Deuteronomy 16 and 18. And this will be uh, verses 18. 19 and 20. Appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God is giving you, and they shall judge the people fairly. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Follow justice and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. Okay, even though theocracy, God rules society of the ancient Israelites, human leadership was ins instituted. Judges and officials were appointed to settle disputes among the people in a fair and impartial, impartial fashion and to provide leadership for the people of God. While the Levites were su supported by the sacrifices and offerings brought to the tabernacle and later the temple by general population, we are not told of any appointed judges receiving any kind of stipend. In, in, uh, it seems that they may have uh, continued with their usual occupation in addition to their judicial appointment. <clears throat> there is a great danger for anyone to accept a bribe. Whether rich or poor, the lure of money can cause us to stray and even slightly from the right path. A little bribe money paid under the table was common in the courts of other societies at that time, but it was not to be so with God's people. Okay, uh, verse 20 says, um, what are the results when the love, what are the results when we love God and follow justice? We experience true life and God's favor working for our good, Romans 8, 28. What then can we expect when we are not people of justice? We can anticipate the hand of the Lord, our God working against us. The ancient Israelites were not any more or less 
prone to falling short in matters of justice. All human beings are enticed to say or do things that might tip the scales in their favor. God was giving his people their own land. It was a gift from him, but they bore responsibility as if they bore responsibility if they were to continue to live there. They had to be people of justice. Okay, so uh, what this is letting us know is that uh, uh, God actually set up a court system for the Israelites. Um, once upon a time, Moses was doing all of this by himself, but it just became overwhelming to him. Um, his grandfather, grandfather, father-in-law, I think it was, uh, came in and saw how he was being overwhelmed and kind of helped share the idea with him that he should get some help. And so they set up tiers of, of, um, of judges and priests um, and, and, and high courts, as we'll get into in just a little bit. Um, and so people could get their problems resolved fairly. And that was the key to setting this up was for everyone to have a fair chance for everyone to be able to uh, feel like they were getting justice. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's good that he brings out in here, even in scripture, do not accept bribes. Okay. So judges, even though you might not be getting paid for what you're doing from a monetary standpoint, uh, you have a responsibility to do what's right, not let money influence you, whether somebody's rich or poor, or they have money, do not let that influence your judgment. Okay. And as long as everyone follows suit and, and do and obeys God's will, and God's blessings will be upon them. Anytime they go contrary to his will, well, you have to suffer the consequences. And the same is in today's society as it was even here uh, in our Bible passage. Okay. So now let's go on to chapter 17, verses eight and nine. If cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuits, or assaults, take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. Go to the Levitical priests and to the judge who is in office at that time. Inquire of them, and they will give you the verdict. Okay. So Moses was the original judge of the Hebrews. But the increasing size of population soon meant that he was deciding cases from morning until evening. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, came to visit and saw the overwhelming workload Moses was carrying in settling disputes and matters of the law. At Jethro's suggestion, Moses assembled a system for other judges to assist him in a tiered arrangement, Exodus 18, 13 through 26. Moses was succeeded by Joshua and then by a series of men and women who provided leadership and served as head judge, head judge for the um, confederation of 12 tribes until they had settled in the promised land. The judges were to decide disputes among the people in matters of law, the cases that provided that proved too difficult for one of the judges to decide were to be brought to the Levitical priest and to the head judge or leader. Our own system of courts and laws is basically, is based largely on this kind of arrangements and the law described in the Old Testament. Okay, so I do apologize. I got a little ahead of myself there. So in that last uh, commentary, I can explain part of this commentary. Okay, so again, um, Moses went on and put this in place. Uh, to better be able to do the will of God because it became too overwhelming for, for just one person. Okay, so let's go on to verse 10. You must act according to the decisions they give you at the place the Lord will choose. Be careful to do everything they instruct you to do. Act according to whatever they teach you and the decisions they give you. Do not turn aside from what they tell you to the right or to the left. Anyone who shows contempt for the judge or for the priest who stands ministering there to the Lord your God is to be put to death. 
You must purge the evil from Israel. All the people will hear and be afraid and will not be contemptuous again. All right, then. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're getting serious here. It says, <clears throat> the narrative of ancient Hebrew Uh, reveals they were prone to worship idols and false gods at a variety of places rather than being faithful to worship the Lord God only and only at the place he designated, the tabernacle at first and later the temple, a permanent structure located in the capital city of Jerusalem. Fidelity in deciding court cases meant that those cases were to be heard only at a place God would choose, not decided by just anyone. The decision made by the high courts were final and the people were to act according to them. There were no appeals once the case had been heard and decided at the top of the justice system. It was important to God that the people respect and obey the final decision. The ruling judge or the priest failing to do so <clears throat> constituted acting in contempt of court. And the penalty was capital punishment. It was considered an evil rejection of God's justice that the people needed to purge or remove from their midst. This seemingly harsh response was to create holy fear in people and discourage them from being contemptuous towards judges, the legal system, or any legal decision that had been handed down. Okay, so they had their court system in place. They had their judges in place, and then the, the priest and the head judge in place as well. And so anytime there was um, a matter that needed to be figured out, that needed to be straightened out, you could take it to the judge. Now. You couldn't just meet the judge on the street. There, there was a certain place that was designated by God uh, where these matters had to take place, okay? So um, certain people were designated, certain places were designated, and all of that had to be in place. And so um, uh, once it, it happened, you had to accept the judgment, okay? Um, and as the uh, uh, topic, as it says, they want to put the holy fear of God in you. In other words, uh, once the judgment came down, you had to accept it. If you did not accept it, uh, you could stand what they called capital punishment, which would mean death. And yes, as I understand it, this was a physical death, not a metaphor. You, you'd be killed dead, <laughs> okay? And so, um, uh, um, and, and, and the thing that they were saying is really, these judges represented the will of God. God's will was final, okay? And so it had to be accepted. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed their lesson on today as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And uh, on next Sunday, please uh, tune in as uh, Reverend Nehemiah Newman, our Sunday school teacher, will be bringing you your lesson for next week. And uh, until then, my friend, and uh, before I go, just one more thing to say. I love you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless. <laughs>